G'day guys, we're going to talk about the Shaman in WoW Classic. So Shaman's one of those classes that can both melee, cast at range, and heal. Which one you want to do is entirely up to you, or you can be a hybrid spec and do all three. Firstly, we're going to talk about what's the best race to play as a Shaman. How should you level as a Shaman, the kind of gear Shamans use, what talents to pick while you're level, and I'll put in some endgame guides in the description below as well if you want to main a Shaman. One thing to note though is Shamans are Horde only, so if you're planning to play Alliance, you cannot play a Shaman in Classic. Before we get into the guide, let's just talk about shamans and their strengths and weaknesses at max level. If you're planning to heal as a shaman, you will find shamans great because they are one of the best healers you can possibly get, especially in raid groups, and you'll find yourself being accepted into pretty much every single group or guild that you may apply for. Now when it comes to DPS though, they're not so accepted in things like raids. Enhancement shamans may have an exception if they have the improved Wind Fury Totem and the Knife Ol Axes that will buff both melee and spell casters, meaning that the enhancement is like the equivalent of taking 5 DPS with those two things. However, unless you got those two things, getting into raid will be very difficult. On PvP, on the other hand, enhancement and elemental are very, very good. If you're planning to purely just PvP as DPS Charmin, you will have a lot of fun. However, if you're planning to raid, you're better off going healer. So what's the best race for Charmin? Well, it pretty much depends on what you plan to do. Whether you're PvPing, doing PvE, healing, DPSing, melee, range, all different races will provide different benefits to each one. For example, if you want to be an enhancement shaman which is a melee spec you're better off going orc because orcs get the skill with axes increase they also get the blood fury ratio which increases their attack power for so many seconds you get the resistance to sun so if you're going to do some pvp enhancement is going to be great as an orc if you want to do elemental or healing troll is actually the better pick because as a troll you get berserk which increases your attack and casting speed this can also be handy as an enhancement as well you get the increased regeneration which is always nice plus the damage versus beast really really nice as well. Tauren, probably not the most common picked one for a shaman, but you do get some nice racials with it as well. You get the war stomp, which is the AoE stun around your melee range. You also get your maximum health increase, so if you want more health, Tauren's actually probably the best one to go, especially if you want to do any kind of off tanking as a shaman, because yes, that's kind of a thing in vanilla. It's not a popular thing, but it is a thing. And if you want to go herbalism, Tauren's also a great pick for that as well, and you also get the nice little nature damage resistance. When you create your character and log in, you'll notice you have to abilities, lightning bolt, and healing wave. Check your spell book to see if there's anything else. Like in the general tab, you might have a racial ability that you can put on your action bar as well. If you use lightning bolt, you simply click on the target and at about 30 yards range, you can start casting and attacking the target. Simply cast it back to back and you should get it relatively low by the time it gets you. If you run out of mana, simply right click it and melee it down. Your melee abilities do level up as well. You can do both melee or ranged. Every now and then you'll notice that you're in a bit of a pickle and your health's getting a bit low. So this is when you use your healing wave ability. You simply cast it on yourself and it will heal you up. Notice when you're getting melee attack, the spell casting is delayed quite significantly. This is where melee has the advantage, as you won't be delayed, especially when getting attacked by multiple melee targets. Some people don't even use any spell casting while they're leveling. They literally just conserve their mana for healing abilities only, and let the auto attacks do all the damage. So that way if their health gets low, they can simply just heal themselves back up and continually to auto attack. Using this method is also a great way to level up your defense and your weapon. From level 1 you can already go to your shaman trainer and learn your first new ability. In this case we've got rock biter weapon. As you can see spells cost money so if you have no money simply go kill a few things, loot them and sell it at a vendor. Once you've saved up enough money go back to your trainer, click the spell, click train, it'll be in your spell book. In this case, it's under the Enhancement tab. You drag and drop it down on your action bar somewhere, and then have a quick read of what the spell does. In this case, we've got Rock Biter Weapon. This is a weapon in view, similar to what Flame Tongue and Frostbrand does. What this does is increase our melee attack power by 29, and also causes threat. So this is like an off-tanking thing, but it's also great just while questing out by yourself as well. This also lasts for 5 minutes, so just keep an eye on the buff at the top right. Make sure you turn on buff timers if you haven't in the interface already. And that way you can see how long it is. You're trying to avoid casting this in combat does cost quite a bit of mana. As you're out questing, leveling up a bit, keep a lookout for inns. Innkeepers is where you can set your hearthstone. Using your hearthstone will teleport you back to the innkeeper you set it up. Also, if you log out in the inn, you'll get these three Zs. These indicate rest time. If you log out in an inn, you'll accumulate double XP the longer you remain logged out. As you level up, you'll eventually get a shaman quest to get your first totem. The first totem you get is an earth totem, and it'll give you the ability stone skin totem. 
eventually we'll get other earth totems as well. This is basically different depending on what race you choose, but it's a pretty easy quest. Normally you just summon an elemental and have a little chat with it, and he will give you a totem. The totem unfortunately has to stay in your bag for you to use your totem abilities. You also get other cool totems bound to earth like reduces melee attack and also a taunting totem. You'll notice as you level up you'll get rank 2, 3, 4, 5 of the same ability. Depending on what you're doing you use a different rank. For example with healing spells you might use the lower ranks as they use a lot less mana. But things like buffs, like rock biter weapon, use the highest one possible as you only have to cast it once every 5 minutes. One thing to note with your totems as well is you'll notice when you hover over it it'll tell you the totem type under tools. For example here it says tools earth totem, tools earth totem, tools earth totem. So all three of these totems are earth totems. That means if I use one, I can't use another earth totem. If I do, it just spawns the first one I've pulled out. However, if I have a different element, like a fire totem, I can have earth and fire out at the same time. You get your fire totem quest once you hit level 10. Not sure what professions to level. Skinning and leatherworking always great. Just remember to get your skinning knife if you get skinning as a profession. And leatherworking is also a great one to level with it, as leatherworking pretty much something shamans can take advantage of all the way up to level 60. As you can make your own gear, you can give yourself armor kits that enhance your armor on a bunch of different pieces, and this makes you more tankier easy to level. You can also sell these or simply just vendor the skins that you get to make some extra money. The best way to level up in heavily crowded areas is to simply try and pull one mob at a time. Every now and then you'll pull two. If this happens, put out your taunt totem. Your totem will distract one where you can finish off the other one. The totem will eventually die however, so if you pull too many sometimes it might be better to drop the taunt totem and run away and then drop the slow totem if they're caning on you. Try and group up with people if you can. If there, you see a bunch of people around you that are doing the same quest, or you'll simply uh, get invited to a group, hit accept, because in a group, especially when it comes to slaying things, it can be done so much faster. Also, it's always, always handy if one of them's a healer or a tank, and a few more damage so you can melt things down really quickly, and that way if you pull a big group of people by accident, your chances of survival are much better. Every now and then you'll accidentally pull more than what you want. And in that situation, you're very likely to die, so you've got to think quick. You can either try and kill them as fast as you can, which can be done if your group's good enough, or you can try and heal yourself long enough to kill them, or you can simply drop a totem and try and run away. In this case, I didn't do any of those and I died. Some mobs will run away when the health is low, so save your earth shock to quickly finish them off to prevent further pulls. Once you finish the quest, rather than running all the way back through the cave, which is a very hostile environment, it might be quicker and more efficient to simply just use your hearthstone, especially if you have no more quests in that immediate area. Once you hit level 10, make sure you go see your shaman trainer to get new spells, and you'll also get a quest to get your fire totem. I'm not going to cover the quest for the fire totem in this video, but just be aware it is a bit harder, so it's sometimes it might be worth leveling up a little bit more to make the quest a bit easier. Remember to check the Shaman Trainer for more spells once you hit level 10 as you'll get three really important ones. First one being Flame Shot. This is your first dot ability or damage over time and it works very similar to the way it does in BFA. You've got a six second cooldown, it's about a 20 yard range, it does initial fire damage and an additional 28 fire damage over 12 seconds. It's good to start your fight with this ability after pulling the target. You also got the Flame Tongue weapon ability. So it's a little bit different to Flame Tongue in BFA. For example, it lasts five minutes instead of just a few seconds which is a bit nicer in my opinion and it also does different damage based on the speed of your swings for example the slower the weapon the more damage it does that's why you might have heard that shamans do better with slower weapons especially enhancement shamans getting a nice big slow two-hander that does a ton of damage is the most optimal way to use the flame tongue just remember you can only have one type of element on your weapon at once so you can't have rock biter and flame tongue on at the same time as you level up higher you unlock other elements that imbue your weapon like Frostbrand, which does frost damage and slows the enemy. The most popular one for enhancement shamans is this one, Wind Fury Weapon. This is basically what gives them that big Wind Fury strike that you may have heard of enhancement shamans doing, making it extremely powerful. The only downside is it's RNG. You only get a 20% chance, which is still pretty high. Unfortunately, you can't control when or where it will proc. Shamans have Wind Fury Totem. This is basically the big thing that makes them so popular in groups. Most healers will have this by default, but the reason I said before that some groups will take a single enhancement shaman is because they can have an, a talent that improves the Wind Fury Totem. It's a fair way down the enhancement tree, so you pretty much have to be an enhancement shaman to achieve this talent. But as you can see, increase the Wind Fury Totem bonus by 15% with one point and 30% with two points. 
It also increases your flame tongue totems as well. All right, last thing I want to talk about before we get into the talents is lightning shield. Lightning shield is super duper handy. You want to keep this up at all times. One of the downsides is you'll have to cast it pretty much before every fight as you'll only get three charges and you'll use them all up by the time you finish the fight. So you keep it on yourself and it does damage to melee attack. For example, I'll go up to this wolf now and I'll hit him and you'll see the charges drop. We're down to two, now we're down to one, and now it's completely gone. So why would we use that? Well, it does the most damage per mana spent out of all of your spells, so that's why it's efficient to have it on at all times. If you get sick of right-clicking on every single target you want to auto-attack, you can hit slash start attack and macro these with your spells like Flame Shock and Storm Strike. To give you an idea of what rotations to use, uh, it changes every level. For example, always have your Lightning Shield on as I explained earlier. Use your Slow Totem and that way you can get some spell casts off. For example, you want to do some spell casting with your Lightning Bolt from 1 to 10 and from 10 to 60 you want to use your Searing Totems. You then want to follow it up with the Dot so your Dot is always ticking and doing that extra damage behind the scenes. And then you want to finish it with your Auto Attack. Here it says to use Storm strike but that's only if you use the enhancement build. But the best buff for your weapon, you use your wind fury if you're using a one hand weapon or a fast two hander. Using a slow two hander, use rock biter. Flame tongue is pretty okay as well. If you're not sure what the stats to get, if you're going enhancement, agility over strength over stamina over intellect over spirit. The reason to go agility is it's 1% extra crit and dodge chance. You go strength as well for the attack power increase and the stamina, one point of stamina is 10 hit points or 10 health. If you're going elemental or resto, you want spell damage over intellect over crit. Intellect basically increases your mana by 15 points per one point of intellect and the spirit is out of combat health and mana regenerate. So here I'm going to cover the two leveling talents. You're going to go either elemental or enhancement. Of course there's a restoration one as well but that's more for if you're constantly leveling in groups and dungeons. As far as questing goes this would be the much more efficient way to level as a DPS but this is the enhancement build I've got here. There's a few reasons why we put some points in elemental. One of them is to reduce our shock spells by cooldowns by one second as we'll be using those a lot as an enhance and also this one increases our crit by nine percent whenever we crit with one of our spells like shocks we also get the clear casting state gives us a free spell basically without any mana cast and we get the increased fire totems as well this one down here is the interesting one storm strike it's a very strong ability that you get however this is something that you won't take in a raid group for example in a raid group you'll be taking improved weapon totems instead to buff the raid you're not really there to do damage however for questing you're only there for you so take whatever talents you want and take advantage of the fun talents like Storm Strike. You also get some other cool talents like Improved Ghost Wolf Form. So you can get in and out of your Ghost Wolf Form a lot faster. And you get attacks like Flurry. For the Elemental spec, you put some points in Restoration. And most in Elemental, you don't actually put any in Enhancement at all. So this is pretty much pure spellcasting. So look, most of these talents are Improved Healing and Improved Lightning, Mana Efficiency. You also get this one here, Eye of the Storm. This is probably the best one. As when you get hit by a Critical Strike, whether it's melee, or ranged unaffectable so the focus casting effect prevents you from losing casting time when taking damage super duper handy and vanilla as it's a big deal you also get the big elemental mastery cooldown makes your next spell 100% crit chance and reduce the mana cost as well by 100% and you get a few other nice little talents like improve reincarnation which reduces the cooldown by 10 minutes and totemic mastery which increases the radius of your totem to affect friendly targets by 30 yards i better wrap it up there guys before this video starts to get way too long if you enjoyed this guide let me know in the comments below give it a like and a subscribe if there's something that i missed or something you'd like to ask just leave it in the comments and i'll get back to you as soon as possible thanks for watching guys i'll see you next time